I know this isn't one of my usual entries. So, um, perhaps you can tell I'm crying. Don't worry, I'm not sad. Um, I'm not. Nothing actually happened. Um, uh, I was, um, uh, moving uh, some stuff from, you know, since we moved here. Uh, there has been a lot of things from my older house. Um, and, um, kind of couple questions just answered themselves, uh, in a weird way, if I might add. Um, well, I, I guess I, I could start this as, um, you know, a recounting of, um, I've, I don't know, like ten years ago more. I don't I don't remember exactly the date, but I can't uh I can't recall um everything that, that happened and the feelings and in the faces just perfectly and I I could never shake it off. I guess it was around two thousand six or so. Um I think I finally found at the very least a piece of the puzzle that it is that people or whatever they are follow me I think this one was is actually a dead person that at some point was human it's not my main one my main one just doesn't have a shape uh it just shifts but uh this other one is just you know not so um, you need to understand when I talk about dead people and ghosts and stuff like that, I don't mean it in a bad way. Uh, they're not dangerous to me. They're dangerous to the people who want to hurt me. And I don't know how that works, honestly. Uh, I just, you know, I was just a very weird kid, I guess. Um, when I was in my 30s or something, like 20s, nearly 30s, um, I had this dream one night, not not in a special night, nothing had happened, you know, um, nothing particular had happened. And I remember that I told this dream because it just was so vivid and it was just so weird in a way, like looking at an old picture and just... You don't remember the place, you don't remember the people in the picture, but somehow it just is familiar. It just evokes a, a feeling that you have not felt in years, decades perhaps. And I remember that I told my best friend back then about this. Um, you know, and I said it was so real. It was so... I, I could, you know, feel it. I could almost remember it, but I know it was impossible. Whatever I dreamed was just some crazy random dream, and, and it doesn't make sense. So, um... I don't know what to do. I, and he cannot, you know, shrug it off. Laugh. We talk about horror movies or whatever it was video games we were playing and just, you know, it just skipped my mind completely, but not completely. Ugh. Hard to put it. In the dream, you need to understand the background was like ever changing. It wasn't fixed. It wasn't just like, I'm in a place. It was like, you know, you're in a place, but it is not just a place. It's an amalgamation of different places at the same time. And none of them you know. It might be a cafe table on some random plaza or park or, you know, buildings around us. And nothing makes sense. Nothing like that exists. Uh, but, you know, it's a dream, so what about it? It doesn't need to make sense or even exist. Uh, but there was one other person in the dream, and while he didn't talk about me, he didn't talk to me, um, still, 
uh, he was, he was just, you know, this very strong presence. And, and I remember his face and, and his hair. He was, you know, was uh, um elderly gentleman. I do remember I was, you know, 26, 28, I don't remember, but it was a couple, some very much years ago. Um, and um, it was, you know, around his 45 or 50, perhaps. Um, blonde hair, but that kind of blonde, that almost, you know, almost like, you know, not albino, but, you know, not your regular yellow blonde hair. Neither. It was just, you know, very clear and neatly, you know, packed um, backwards. And he had this almost piercing, very light blue color eyes. And then, you know, he looked like 50, I guess. I, I don't know. Uh, and I had this... This feeling, this very weird feeling that I knew him and that I knew him dearly, that he was very special to me in some way, that he was somebody, you know, like a father or a mother or a brother or, you know, someone that, that you know or an uncle that you know and that you, you know, care about and love. Uh, but I didn't knew this this person in my dream. It was just, you know, a dream. And I shake it up as, as that. Uh, so there wasn't much to say about it. Um, I kept, you know, he kind of kept me safe during the dream. It was like we were moving from one point to the other. I, I told you already, points didn't make sense. Background didn't make sense. The place in which we were didn't make sense. But somehow... Uh, we were moving uh, from one place to another, and he was protecting me. You know, like, I don't know, a CIA agent sort of thing. Um, he had a gun, I guess, or, or something. He he looked kind of what you will expect an FBI mixed with a CIA will look uh, in his clothing. It was, you know, very neat black suit uh, Thai, you know, very formal kind of guy, but very assertive about whatever mission he was into, and apparently, you know, keeping me alive was his mission somehow. So, I, I, you know, the dream ended up in a scenario in which he had to stay behind. Um, I didn't know why. I didn't know who wanted me dead or who was, you know, chasing us. Uh, he could have got the lead behind and, and I had to, you know, keep moving. And I would never forget his face and the way he looked at me. And I, a part of me knew that I had disappointed this imaginary man. Uh, but I cared about him so much. And I know if I say I loved him so much, it's going to sound weird, but it wasn't you know, a couple's love, a romantic love. It was, you know, pure love, like real love. Like uh, like you will love a brother or your best friends. Uh, you know, that untainted feeling of love that I'm not used to experience for what's worth. I mean, like, I'm not, you know, the most loving kind. Um... And um, what happens sometimes is that whenever I touch something, even if I'm not, you know, I don't know why, but whenever I touch something that is to from my old house and hasn't been handled in quite a while, um, I kind of, I don't, okay, I'm going to sound crazy. Okay, this is this is crazy. This is there is no way in hell you are going to believe me. But I transport myself to my old house at the time period in which I lived there, but with you know my current adult form. 
and for a couple seconds I can browse it. I know. Creepypasta serious shit. You must be thinking I've invented this. And at this point I don't fucking care. Um when I was younger, when I was, you know, ten something like that, I used to do this that I, I never fully remember why I did it or what was the point on it. It was you know, waiting my parents to go to sleep and then I just when all the lights were out in the middle of the darkness on the night, I would just, you know, you need to remember these were the eighties, early nineties at best. Uh, no lights, no light pollution, no cell phones, no internet, no no computers. You had a TV, a VHS tape player at best, and five channels. I mean, like, yeah. so um, I don't know why I did it, but uh, I used to, and this wasn't just one thing only. It was um, several times during the span of years. I got up, I walk in the dark, I sit in the uh in, in the living room and I didn't speak with my mouth. It's it's you know, like when when I say it out loud, it's just making me look crazy and it's making me realize that none of you guys are gonna believe this. Um uh, but it probably at least just take it as a funny story, you know. You don't need to even believe me. Um no, um, my my mom and my dad never find out that I did this because every single night I got up, I went there, I sit, you know, on the floor, it was a wooden floor, and there was these very deep conversations that I can't recall what they were about, but they were playing within my head, and it wasn't like, you know, schizophrenia or something that you're just hearing voices. Uh, no, it was like, I could see the outline of shades of people standing in the darkness of my living room, but none of them scare me, uh, which was normal to me. I saw weird shit all my life, but, you know, none of them were feeling aggressive like some did, you know. Um, and I just, I spoke to them, but they were... They will ask me questions that much I remember. I don't remember the questions, I don't remember the answers. They will just kind of ask me things and I will just think about the answer. And the way I heard them, it wasn't like a voice. It was like a thought. Like somebody just pop an idea inside your head. Kind of, you know, feeling. You, you kind of knew they were, you know, what they were asking without even hearing or or knowing who or what and you just cannot you know i thought about the answer too it was like i don't know telepathic communication i don't know what the fuck that is um and i could never see their faces or at least i could never recall their faces um i could you know, I, I know there were several of them, like around six of them or so. Um, and at some point, I would just, you know, just keep it, at, you know, like everything's gone. And they will just disappear. Like in, I don't know, they, they, they weren't real people. They weren't really there. So they just like, and whenever I was, you know, again, alone, I, I would just pick myself up and just go to sleep. Um, and this will last like, you know, an hour, half an hour, every single night, almost. Um, and they were waiting for me. And I was going to them, like, if I already knew. And I remember doing this, but I don't remember why, who they were. If I was, you know, you might be thinking, well, perhaps you were sleepwalking, perhaps you were dreaming, perhaps you were... You know, having a seizure, an epileptic episode, um, schizophrenia, some mental illness, an auditory hallucination, voices in your head, um, visual hallucinations, everything, trust me. I've been going to psychiatrists and psychologists since I was five, almost six. 
they don't, they never find anything that you might say, well, perhaps it was, you know, some kind of brain conditions. Perhaps you're not mentally ill, but something in your head is, you know, it's, all, it's wrong. MRI, select turns, cephalograms, everything, you name it. I'm healthy. I was healthy. Every single thing that I endure, suffer, every disease that I had, uh, it was, you know, at some point since, you know, my, my mom just keep testing me because it was a problem when you're a kid and you go to school and you say, I talk to the people in black. And they say, what, like people dress in black? And I say, no, completely black people. You know, it's like, it, it's a problem when you do that kind of thing. It's a problem when you see it somewhere and you just say to other people, I'm going to make rain. And sometimes you you, you kind of know that it's, it's about to rain, but you're five and you weren't supposed to know it was about to rain. So when it rains, all the other kids on the class just cower behind, you know, the teacher who is deeply upset about you bothering the kids, even though you are a kid. And just, you know, sending you to the principal's office. And that was my life. That was what was normal to me. So when we moved around the 2000s, the early 2000s, uh, 1989, early 2000s, we moved. Um, That house that I grew up in just was left behind. And whatever was with it, just, you know, some came with me, I'm pretty sure, but some couldn't or wouldn't and they were just left there and um i avoid even just going by and it's just you know 10 blocks away 15 blocks away from my home from my current locations i didn't move that far like just blocks away literally and just like i can't just bring myself to go through there i don't know why you know there's just very weird sensation about going back there. But then again, I guess people who just, you know, live their entire childhood on a home and just rehome themselves during their teens, just perhaps, you know, um, their experiences. Now, the weird thing um, that just happened was that got me, you know, tears running on my eyes. And I said, I'm not sad. I'm not upset. I'm not, what the fuck is going on? And, um... The thing was that uh, I was, you know, I made this experiment a couple of times, even when my my eyes closed, and I told my mom, well, you know, this is a box. Just pull something out of it and just leave me touch it to see what the fuck happens. And whenever I touched an item that was, you know, not important or recent, just nothing happened. Whenever I held... Uh, an object, you know, a key, uh, a gemstone, a necklace, something very stupid, something unimportant that was in that house. I kind of just, I was able to see the house as I remember it. And you need to understand my eyes closed. I had no idea why I was holding, you know, so even so, if I could transport myself into a memory, I wouldn't have been able to know when to do it. So what I told my mom was, you know, to take the things and put them away, uh, you know, separate the things in which I tell you that I'm seeing something. So she did. Um, and, you know, when I woke it up, and we just rerun this. And then I rerun it myself, you know, eyes closed, throw a bunch of things into a box, shake it off, um, think about something else. So I wouldn't have in mind whatever I throw into the box. And then just, you know, close my eyes, put a hand, pick one thing, just, you know, feeling not the shape of the thing, but how the f- how, how it feels. I don't know how else to put it. And I was, you know, I'm cleaning my room. As you can see, it's a pretty mess of boxes and stuff. And I was, and I find, you know, an old collection of dolls. So not dolls, you know, toys. My little ponies from the early 80s, you know, stuff that, you know, is old. And um, I start crying. But I wasn't crying because, you know, I saw my old ponies because... 
I don't understand, you know, I just, I only have good memories of them if dad matters at all. So, I, you know, I wasn't feeling sad. When you feel sad, you realize, you, you just say, oh, this made me so sad. This evoke a certain memory of something made me sad or made me want to cry. But, um, you know, I'm hardly, I don't cry just because I, I, it's weird and it has happened that I pass on a, you know, some place that something lingered and I wasn't even aware it was a grape, but I start crying and feeling the urge and the need to, you know, it's like feeling the urge to hug whatever it is. You know, you want to protect it. You want to hug it. You want to make it feel better. But you don't know to whom or to what. There isn't an object. There isn't anything like that. It's just a feeling of sadness, deep and, and, and old almost. So, um, uh, sorry. Uh, you know, it's passing out since I put the box down. Um, Great cue if you ever experience something like that. Just wherever it's in the box, just you know, it stays in the box. Just leave the box out of the way. Um, what happened was that I was ramming through this um, this stuff. As you can see, my hair is not fashionable or anything. I'm not. I'm not doing that. That kind of video, at very least. Um, but I wanted to record my reaction. I wanted you guys to, or at least, if you don't believe me, it's, it's okay. But I wanted you guys to see that my reaction was real. It was real that I was, you know, I was just, um, I wasn't just going to record the video sounding distress. Uh, that I never show myself like this because I look like shit. Um, you know, um, tumble boy, hurt back. You know, I'm just, just. It needs to be practical, not beautiful. So, all of a sudden, all these images, just, I was on my balcony, which I often stayed during the dawn, just watching the sunrise uh, when everything was quiet. You need to understand something about the 80s and the 90s, the early 90s, is that there wasn't that many cars, there wasn't that many light pollution, there wasn't that many noise pollution. There was barely anything to do that was electronic. So whenever it was, you know, uh, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., there was this magic, weird, golden ink from the sunset reaching out on the rooftops of the city and it was marvelous, you know, like it was some of the most beautiful things that I've seen in my life. And I know what you're thinking, you know, uh, uh, every time the suns rise each day is beautiful. What's new with that? But it felt different because there wasn't any interference. It was just you and this, everything, every single particle of fucking air around you. It was just you and that. And you could feel it. And you weren't numbed by, you know, a cell phone or, or anything like that. It was just weird, but beautiful. And I, I just, I had this image of being there, standing on my, um, standing on my, my balcony you know, and this is very impractical because every time you want to, you know, put something on a box, it just triggers. So trust me, this isn't something that I want inside my head. Uh, you know, it's beautiful and it's shocking and it's, you know, but yeah, very, very not practical at all. So um, I'm there and um, I just turn around and I see my room and I walk. But almost like I'm not walking, almost like I'm floating through it towards the door and then the palier and then the, you know, the living room when I used to sit. And through the warmth of this sunrise, this imaginary sunrise, I see the outside very, you know, shaky, like vibrating kind of. 
it's hard to describe. It's like a vibration kind of thing. Um, these people on the same places that now I remember I saw them in the dark, standing there around the chairs, just standing there. And one of them just walks towards me. And I, I you need to understand, I, I don't feel threat or fear or anything. I, I'm just there witnessing this. Um, and at the same time, I don't know where my body is. I'm here in my room sitting. I apparently just, you know, my mind went some fucking elsewhere and just left my body here uh, during, you know, and it might seem like it took a long time, but it was a blink of an eye in the real world like here. Uh, and, and this, you know, one of them just comes comes near me, comes near, you know, my vision, my, my field of vision. And um, it's this man. It's this man that I seen, like, I don't know, 10, 12 years after I actually moved out from that house in a completely different dream that I never even knew. I mean, like, it, sure, it feel weird, but it, it never just crossed my mind that it had any more significance that a uh, really weird dream about a guy that I thought I knew, but I didn't remember from where, and I was absolutely sure I haven't seen him in my entire life. Probably not, not, not you know, alive. Like I don't, I don't know who he is. Um, with this severe, but yet gently expression, and he walks towards me, and you know, I you you can hear my voice right now cracking because it is, because I'm feeling some sort of emotion, which is pretty odd to me. I don't feel emotions. Like, yeah, I do, but, you know, not like this. It comes to me and just... It was just like... Trying to make me acknowledge that was him. I... The other figures just still didn't have a face. But he did. And, you know, it was like his face on this outline shaded figure I wasn't wearing the suit that I saw on my dream later on or or anything it was just you know he was there and I felt the love this unconditional love not like you know like you're in love but like a child's or, or a mother's love or a father's love, or a brother's love, or this unconditional sinking feeling of recognition, like you found something that you lost at some point in your life, that something that a part of you, like a missing twin, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know how it feels that, but I know how this felt. And it's the closest that I've heard anybody describe that that feeling, you know, like when twins that never knew uh, the other one existed just first met. And they, you know, they kind of feel like they found something they didn't knew was missing, but still felt like they have found something so significant and so... Um, something that they needed to be complete and i i just it was less than a second but it was him and it's the first time i saw him in i don't know how many years like more than a decade and i'm what days away from my 40th birthday i'm 40 what the fuck who the fuck is this guy? And I don't mean this in a bad way. Because the feelings that it bugged me were so overwhelmingly good. Like, if, imagine your mom passed away and suddenly 
You just dream about her and she's holding you. She's tucking you in and pulling her arms around you. But I don't know who this guy is. And I'm being serious. I don't know who he is. I never see him in my life. But sometime, somehow, I know him. And I don't know who he is. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I'm losing my head. Even through, you know, psychiatry, psychologists, neurosurgeons, and everybody has been inside my fucking head. I know I see dead people. And I know I see things that I shouldn't be seeing. And not just dead people, some other things. And there are moments in my life in which I just... I accept it and I just live and move on. And there are all the moments in which, like this, I want to know. Are they real? They, they, they were ever, you know... Uh, perhaps uh, they were some part of my family in some other life, in some other place. What the hell are they? What did they follow me? What do they love me so much? What did I ever do to deserve such love and care? And, you know, yeah, sure. Uh, there are some of them who are just um, extremely aggressive and, you know, you can feel almost the hate or the terror when they are in front of you. But not this man. I don't even know his name. I just know his face. And I could... If I had a printer into my brain, I could give you... A Polaroid of that guy, just, you know, as clear as day. I just want to know who he is. And why he follows me. And why he tries to connect towards me. And who are the other ones who were there when I grew up? Who were the other ones in the dark talking to me? Who were the other ones right now when I saw this guy just, you know, show his head and his face for the first time since I remember? Because now I'm thinking, if there are around six of them and one of them is this guy, the other ones have to be someone else. They have to, you know, by logic. If one has a face, all of them have. Who are they? Why are they calling up to me like this? Every time they can. You know, it's like a broken phone line in which you're trying to connect to somebody that you love and, you know, it's broken up. You know, the, the signal is just... And this is crazy, you know, because we are in the age of science and I grew up to science. I work in museums. I'm not the kind of person you will hear talking about goblins and, you know, urban nation like it is a real thing. Because truth is, the people like me, the people who actually know these things are real, we keep it to ourselves. Who the fuck is going to believe you? You just... You don't know how many times I tried to um, connect the dots, put something in perspective. There is no perspective. They're there. And that's that. And somehow they know you and somehow some love you very much. And somehow some grow up with you and some just stayed behind. And somehow every now and then you get a glimpse to somebody you don't even know. But you know, it loves you unconditionally. With a strength that reaches out throughout any sort of logical understanding that the humankind has had up to at least this point. 
And I want to think that just like, you know, for Asian Egypt people, you know, Ra was a, a god and not a star in the sun. This is going to have a rational explanation at some point by science, you know? Not just, you know, let's believe in green goblins and that's it. It has to have an explanation, which is we're not advanced enough to phantom this. So, um, the last three times I did a video on this guy throughout, you know, the years, kind of got corrupted and deleted. I don't know why. So I kind of hope that this one just goes up, that I can process it and just, you know, put it up there. But if it doesn't happen, if it just never gets anywhere, if it just, you know, gets erased magically like it did in so many other cases and cassette tape players and uh, digital cameras and webcam cameras and computers and it just always disappears. It's like there's always one step ahead for you not to leave a single shred of evidence. Are they time traveling? Are they people I knew somewhere else? Some other life I had prior or after this one? What the fuck is going on? There has to be an explanation. And, you know, if if you are there, if you're real, which I'm sure you are at this point, I don't know what to say. I want to say something smart and snarky about it, but the only words that come to my mind are thank you. The only the only feeling that I have in my heart is profoundly pr profound affection and, and love. And um and I know this is crazy and I need to get moving, you know, with the boxes and, and the stuff. So they were people. <laughs> I was talking to someone. It wasn't a dream. It wasn't, you know, shadows. This is not inside my head. Trust me, I went back and through to so many doctors by now. And there are still there. And whenever I think that, you know, I lost it, I lost the touch. I just, I, I, I just, I'm not seeing them or things happening that much so often. It just, you know, goes quieter for a while. Um, at some point, something like that happened. I move a wrong thing out of place. I'm just packing something up and, you know, <laughs> shit. It was so beautiful. And before you say it, I'm not on drugs, I'm not high, I'm just trying to clean my fucking house and there's absolutely nothing on my environment, trust me, it's clean, no no mold, nothing is giving me hallucinations or shit like that. I, I don't I don't know. Okay, I don't I don't know what's going on, but I wanted to share it because Whoever he is, or wherever he is, I needed to put it on tape and say out loud, it's real. Exist. I might not comprehend how or why, and I, but I can't just shove this into the back of my head with a rational explanation anymore saying, I oh, know, it was just a weird dream, it kind of felt familiar. No, it was just, you know, your active imagination as a child. You know, it's, it all just made sense without words. Have you ever experienced that? Comprehending something without even the processing of it? It just kind of, you know, the answer is there. So yeah, I guess I'm um I'm gonna keep moving things. I hope this doesn't happen again. I don't think it will, because shit. 
I just felt a vibration on the floor. All around it. What the fuck? Nothing is moving, nothing fell down. Perhaps he's here. I'm not afraid of him, really. I've been a friend of some of them, but not this one. Something just stomp into like a person walking. Yeah, I know you're gonna say that I'm lying, but I'm not. You know, these these are wooden floors, and it, when somebody steps on one side, it just it trembles. You know, all the length of the wooden floor. It's just it felt like somebody walking. And I kid you not, there is absolutely no space for seeing the floor. You know, like, I'm going to just, you know, try to um, show you guys. You know, there you go, the floor. And uh, that that's pretty much what I'm, what I'm working on. And, you know, uh, clothing and clothing and, and shits like that. You know, please do tell me if you can see the goddamn floor because there isn't a way to see the goddamn floor it's just there it's just there and this is my feet these are my feet um somebody was walking on the floor and there's no space for and i'm alone my mom just went out to buy some medicine okay yeah this is why I don't go into Reddit. This is why I don't get into creepy pastas. Weirder shit happen in my daily life than, you know, some Anon sharing some story. And I need to pack most of these toys, of these things that you're watching there, that they were just, you know, for sale or for display purposes back in the day. It just, they need to go or at very least to pack them and offer them. Shit. Well, I'm, I'm going to end this video with the hopes that it's not going to get deleted like the other ones. But I don't, know. I don't, I don't have that hope. If the floor feels like somebody's walking on it.